So because I'm in Scotland, I thought I'd better put a castle in the vlogs. So uh, here is Castle Stalker. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little bit of a challenge for myself. I've shot this many a time. So I'm gonna have a challenge. And the challenge is gonna be telephoto lens or drone. Let's see which wins. So welcome to Castle Stalker and uh, this is on the way to Appen and the castle stands for the Castle of the Falconer because it was built originally in 1450 although there was a castle here before then and uh, it was built for King James IV used it as a hunting lodge and uh, it was given to the Stuarts of Appen to look after and they looked after it until believe it or not 1645 when Ian Stuart lost the castle in a game of cards unbelievably. Um, the Stuarts did challenge this a few years later and managed to sort of get the castle back. But this castle has flipped between the Campbells and the Stuarts quite a long, long history. Uh, and that's the thing with Scottish castles. Most of the ones that are completely intact tend to have swapped sides on a regular basis. And this is a great castle for photography. And the reason being is, is it faces west. And because you've got this big vista here, you're always going to get a sunset no matter what time of year and if the weather conditions are right then you're always going to see the sun and all you need to do is just move your body position around to get the sun in the composition um, at this time of year it's setting a little bit over here so I'm going to probably stay here but I might move on round and we'll have a look so this is what I'm going to use in my experiment and we're going to battle between the Mavic 2 Pro and the we've got the Nikon D800 here and what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to set the drone up probably first. Um, we'll get a few shots. And this Mavic 2, it's got the Hasselblad camera on it. So it's actually quite good. It comes with a 20 megapixel camera. And that's not too bad. I mean, in, the, in a few years ago, this was fantastic. Obviously, nowadays, things have moved on somewhat. But actually, the detail in it is really good. The only thing I need to be careful of is just to make sure that the ISO doesn't creep up because it is quite noisy when it's getting dark. So I need to be careful with that. I'm going to set it as low as I can, but that still probably might get a bit of grain. What I've got on the front is I've got a nice graduated filter because this sky is going to really blow out. So to help that, I'm going to use a graduated filter. Um, but also what I'm going to need to do is I'm probably going to need to take several shots for exposure and bracket those later on. So that's the Maverick Pro, and then we're going to come on and do battle with the Nikon, the D800 with the 2470 lens on it. And hopefully we shall get a decent shot with that. I don't need to talk about that too much. It's a 38 megapixel camera, and I've had that a few years now. It's a bit like an old pair of shoes that you just don't want to get rid of. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a great camera, and we'll see which comes out top. <laughs> So I'm just getting my composition sorted out and I'll need a little bit of height here and I've gone up a bit higher 
but I'm not too convinced with where the sun is, so I'm going to pan over to my right, and that way at least I'll get the sun on the right hand side. I need to be a bit careful here, I can see that the uh, castle is overlapping, um, if you see the little island behind it, it's definitely overlapping, so yeah, I'm not too sure, I might have to wiggle this composition maybe a bit higher up, I think. So this is the composition that I finally finished with and as you can see I've got some nice separation between these two islands and I ended up putting the sun in the middle of the shot. Um, it's just set by now which is giving it that lovely pink colour. So I'm happy with that shot, I think that composition works really well. So this is the composition for the uh, camera and I've got some lovely pinkness going on in the sky here and what I'm going to try and do, I've got a shot with the sun going down but actually I might come back here with this pink and I'm going to take a long exposure here as well. So okay I think I've got a fairly decent shot and I'm going to talk you through it. Um, I've got the castle in the middle of the shot, as you can see there's the, there's the camera on the right. I've got the castle pretty much central and I've got some nice light. I've found out that the, the dynamic range of this shot is absolutely massive now. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to take another shot. There's a light on the castle. And if I can, I'd kind of wait till it gets a bit dark and that will light up that castle. And therefore it will give me some sort of textures in the castle itself, which is what I'm looking for. The only problem is with that is where my camera is right now is this tide comes in so quick that if I wait much longer, my camera is going to be underwater, the legs have already gone. So I'm going to have to ponder on this. Maybe I need to come back a little bit, but that means I wouldn't be able to stitch this in with the sky. So it's a bit of a quandary. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to let you know. Um, I might take another shot a bit further back where my feet are not getting wet because it's definitely getting a bit moist here. Okay, I've kind of got the shot I like. What I've done is I've ended up popping it the castle in the middle of the shot there, you can see that's pretty much central there. Some nice light. And what I wanted to do is I want to take all these ripples. So I've got all these ripples in the foreground. Just that wind's got up a little bit, um, which is I'm a bit disappointed with. So I'm going to try and slow this down. So I've popped on the big stopper and that's going to give me about a 30 second exposure. Uh, and that way that will average out and it will give me a nice softness to the, to the water and also to the clouds. Um, and that's the plan with this. So having shot with both, the drone and the camera, there's definitely pros and cons for both of these. Um, let's deal with the drone first of all. The good thing with the drone is, is composition is never an issue. You can always move to the right location to get the best out of the shot. So having that flexibility, because we've all been there, landscape photographers, where you're in a location and you're about five metres shy of where you want to be and you can't get to it. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for the drone for that. It is fantastic. You can just move it to wherever you want. The downside with the drone is low light is a nightmare and generally you have to land at low light. And doing long exposures is tricky. I really wanted to shoot this um, with a really long exposure, 30 seconds, just to soften the sky and soften the water. And obviously, even if you put the filter on the drone, it, it still moves a little bit and you still don't get that really good long exposure, which I'd like. Um, so long exposures and, and definitely sort of low light is a problem. The flip side with the camera is, yeah, the camera is fantastic at low light. You can keep an exposure as long as you want and uh, you can put filters on and you don't have to land at night. <laughs> Batteries is never usually an issue, usually unless it's really cold because you've always got one. Um, but the downside is that it's composition and you just can't sometimes get exactly where you want to be. So let me know what you think. Is the drone better? Is the camera better? 
and if you like this video give me a thumbs up it really helps out my channel it just means that people are watching the videos and it gives me a bit of feedback so I'd really appreciate it if you could do that and if you're really liking them get on the old subscribe button and subscribe and you'll see great more content like this thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video So how did you think that went? Well, I thought some of your dialogue was a bit wooden. Wooden? You can talk. <laughs>